Well, greetings. My name is Chris Ralph, and uh, this is a presentation that I give to a number of people I've given a number of times about how to find gold nuggets with a metal detector. Uh, the talk is really aimed towards uh, mostly new guys to moderate experience guys maybe found a little bit of gold and want to do better but there's also some information here that i think would be useful to even more experienced guys so uh, join me here and we'll take a look um let's get started see one of the first things i emphasize is that there's still good gold out there some guys get a metal detector and they go hunting and they may be out a number of times and not find much other than trash and get discouraged but the truth is there really is still gold out there there are big finds yet to be made um, we're going to talk a little bit about the kind of detecting equipment that's needed to recover gold and the different types of detectors that are on the market and what they are really are specialized for you know what their strengths and weaknesses are because none of them are absolutely perfect they all have their strong points and their their weak points um, we're going to talk about locating nuggets with the detector finding the right place that's really the the you know the the bottom line is that your metal detector no matter how good it is if you don't put it over a nugget it isn't going to find any gold you've got to get out there and put that detector in the right place and then let it show you where the gold is but you've got to get it out there and you've got to get the coil over the nugget and that's the skill part you know we're going to talk about the skill of metal detecting that uh, knowledge really counts it really is a big difference the difference maker and knowledge and skill are what make the difference between the really successful guys and the less successful guys now nugget detecting is really exciting it's an amazing thing um, here's a picture of me I got a big grin on my face I'm holding a three-quarter ounce nugget that's a, a nugget of gold that's worth the better part of a thousand dollars and I, I just found it in a little hole there right by where my foot is uh, it was an amazing find and it was very exciting so larger gold is found um, a lot of times going for a uh, detecting is is like going for a walk I, literally if there's not a lot of trash that you have to be digging um, gold de detecting really can't be that it can be that uh, really easy you're putting your coil over different areas that you think might have some gold and the machine will either sound off or, or not and let you know one of the great advantages of this is that no old timer ever had anything like a metal detector yeah, the old miners had pans and sluices and dry washers and all kinds of other stuff. And you know, our equipment today may be better designed and you know, better materials and that sort of thing. But uh, they had stuff that was like most of the things that we had, except metal detectors. They had nothing like that. So that's why there are some tremendous finds being made at Nugget Patches. Nuggets tend to occur in groups, and we're going to talk a little bit about that. And uh, if you stumble onto a, a patch of nuggets that the old timers never found out about, you may be finding a lot of gold in short order. There's a lot of different places you can look. Rivers, hillsides, old placer mines, old hard rock mines. All of these can be sources of detectable gold. You know, talking about amazing finds, this is a 75 ounce nugget that a friend of mine found a few years back what an amazing thing I mean, he had this thing auctioned off and you know the price he got for it was enough to buy a house in most places and a lot of places enough to buy a house and have money left over to go get a new car so hey look there's big gold out there to be found don't don't let anybody fool you now the other side of the coin is that gold is not easy to find I'm not trying to tell you that you're just gonna walk out with your metal detector and and find pounds and pounds of gold and and you know become a millionaire that it just doesn't really work like that the old timers left a lot of trash around and even more recent timers left leave a lot of trash around and so when you go out to metal detect in a lot of places except some open desert remote desert areas you're gonna find yourself digging a lot of trash and yet you know it's still interesting every piece that you beep on and and uh, you know your nugget uh, detector tells you something's there it could be gold and uh, this particular pan if you look at the picture there 
you'll notice that just to the upper right of where the pennies are in the bottom there's two kind of jagged edge targets those are those are nuggets those are nuggets I dug out of the ground and you can see that I got a whole lot of other trash and you know a few pennies and some brass shell casings some chunks of lead and I got two nuggets so it was a good day and um, sometimes I do even worse than this but sometimes I do a lot better uh, detecting gold is the hardest prospecting technique to learn not because the detectors are that impossible to learn you can master your detector it's not that bad um, but the problem is to put your detector coil over a nugget that's shallow enough for your detector to see that's the hard part is learning to find those places where there's shallow gold still to be found because part of the problem is once the you take the nugget out of the ground it doesn't grow back once it's gone it's gone and the truth is that prospectors have already hit the most obvious places and some more about the downsiding uh, downside of metal detecting uh, detectors can be expensive to purchase you know some of them are pretty pricey uh, prospecting uh, the other thing is the prospecting is pretty much like a trade owning a pipe wrench does not make you a journeyman commercial plumber I own a, a pipe wrench and I'm not a plumber a journeyman plumber is a journeyman plumber because of his knowledge and experience and skills he knows what he's doing he can look at a problem and say oh yeah I know how to fix that um, because he's done it before and prospecting is like that it's something you learn and as you go out and every target you find whether it's gold or not uh, tells you a little bit about your problem your you know what you're doing and as far of course especially if you're finding gold you're getting a lesson in finding gold so the things you observe and and the things that you you experience help build your knowledge and skills and we're going to talk about some of this stuff in this presentation and it's going to um, help I, ho I hope uh, help to build those knowledge and skills for you so what would you do to increase your detecting success like I say what you know makes a difference you don't need to be the world's greatest expert uh, but it's good to know the basics so we're going to take a, a look at uh, some different kinds of detectors on the market uh, some of those issues about what makes detecting hard uh, finding the right places to hunt and then uh, keeping the right attitude and, and persevering when you're out there exploring um, some of the available metal detectors uh, most metal detectors on the market are either pulse induction or what's called VLF which is also called induction balance or uh, this new ZBT technology that uh, mine lab is in using in their GPZ 7000 metal detector each type has its own advantages and disadvantages there's no one detector that's right for all situations and all occurrences and all kinds of you know there's no perfect one detector and that's why a lot of more experienced guys have multiple detectors I do I have different detectors and I use different detectors depending on what the situation is it's kind of like a tool um, you know if you have a, a Phillips head screwdriver but you have a flathead uh, type of screw that you need to loosen you know you got a problem you really want a flathead screwdriver to loosen that flathead screw and so having the right detector for the right job it's it's an old saying have the right tool for the right job okay so the induction balance or VLF VLF stands for a very low frequency uh, these types of detectors are generally lower cost uh, they're the most common for a lot of folks who get started as a beginning detector they, they actually work really well um, they can be very sensitive to small gold they're lightweight and ergonomic and but they're one of the disadvantages is they're sensitive to ground noise and hot rocks you see in the picture that's actually a spot where a number of nuggets were found I probably I found several ounces of gold within a hundred feet of where that picture is and you know the ground is really red and there's a lot of iron in the soil and hot rocks and so it's a little harder to use a VLF there because they're so sensitive to ground noise and hot rocks and while they um, and it can be harder to use for our new guys especially in difficult ground they're, they're, there's ways to deal with it and ways to adjust your detector to 
try and cope with that sort of things. But it, it takes a little more skill. And there's also some dual purpose types. Um, one of the things is that um, a number of manufacturers make coins designed for, uh, or make coins, make detectors designed for coin or relic hunting, but also could be used for gold. I, I generally recommend the gold focused ones over the dual purpose types, but you know, if you're only going to hunt gold once in a while, um, you know, they, they, the dual purpose types can be good, especially in really trashy areas because some of the dual purpose types have uh, really good trash discrimination. Okay, pulse induction, um, or sometimes called PI type detectors. Uh, they're more expensive, generally speaking, and they're less sensitive to the very smallest gold uh, bits and flakes and, and that sort of thing, little pickers. Um, uh, but at the same time, even though they're less expensive or less uh, sensitive to that tiny gold, they can ignore many types of hot rocks and mineralized ground. So they actually can be easier to use because a, a, a new prospector doesn't have to deal with all that chirping and beeping and noise making as uh, your metal detector goes over hot ground. They also, some of them are, are pretty heavy. They can be heavy. And so as you can see in this picture, I'm using a pulse induction machine, but I have a, a brace on. I have a um, basically a, a whole, a, um, something to hold my battery and, and balance the detector out. Accessory coils. Um, a lot of guys don't pay enough attention to these. The truth is that more experienced prospectors know that different coils will sense different nuggets. And large coils tend to find large objects deeper, whereas small coils find smaller targets shallow. And how this works out is that if you find a really good area and you've gotten a number of nuggets in a small area, you want to go over it with different coils. As an example, I went over an area um, and got a number of nuggets a while back. And, but it was a small to medium sized coil and I thought well I should try a larger coil so I went over that area and of course there was no targets left in the area that that I could find with my other coil so when I went over it with the big coil I got a, a faint signal and dug down and it got louder and louder it was a half ounce nugget that I'd missed with the other coil just couldn't hear it so that's why you know different size coils especially big coils on deeper ground when you have potential for large nuggets can be a, a big advantage. There's different types of coils and they have to do with the ways that the wire is round around. You can see the red copper uh, coils have been round, wound around in this one. This is called a double D type of design and because uh, the D is facing one way well the other D is backwards but it's still that's what's called a double D and the most sensitive uh, area of this coil is the area where the two loops overlap that's the most sensitive now you, if you got a big target you can still find it on the outer edge but uh, the most sensitive area is that inner part um, but there's monocoils and coaxials and, and uh, there's even a DOD design that's used with the uh, GPZ 7000. So there's a lot of different kinds of coils and they have different uh, characteristics. And as I said, a coil is like a tool and have the right coil for the right situation. So some secrets of successful nugget detecting. Here's some nuggets that uh, I got, including a, a close-up of that uh, three-quarter ounce one that I picked up in Alaska. This is an important thing. Listen to faint signals. A lot of guys, especially coin and relic guys that have switched over or want to try gold prospecting, they go around and if the target isn't real loud, they just ignore it. They don't even hear it. Um, gold doesn't come in big sizes like quarters and nickels. I mean, it does, but, but big nuggets are a lot less common. A lot of times, gold nuggets can be small, and they don't make a huge noise. And so if you're not listening for faint signals, you're not going to hear a lot of targets. And even big nuggets, if they're down deep, will be a faint signal. Slow down. 
another thing that coin and relic guys do is they whip along and uh, try to cover as much ground as they possibly can. And sometimes, you know, it's going fast, you're going to ignore those faint signals. And that's going to cause you to ignore gold and leave gold behind. Always practice with your metal detector. Guys buy a detector and use it for a few minutes and then they go out in the field and uh, they're trying to figure out how to use it. Learn how to use it in your backyard or, or at a park or something. Uh, get out there and practice with the detector and dig some targets. Dig little targets. Don't come in there with a, a silver dollar and, and look for, for that. You know, you want to get little tiny things and uh, see what your your detector does and how it responds and how it sounds. Try using a test nugget. You know, Sometimes when you're out in the field, using a test nugget on the surface kind of gives you a feel for what the, uh, what the ground is like and what the difference is between the ground and the nugget. And don't use a big huge nugget, just use a small one. A lot of guys glue one to a poker chip or something like that to prevent them from losing it. It's a good idea. Uh, learn to dig targets quickly and move on. This is another secret of the successful guys. I see a lot of new guys that will find a target and they'll swing over it again and again and again and again and again and again and again. You know, it's, it's not necessary to do that. And then, then they're not really pinpointing. They're just seeing that there's a target in the ground. You know, once you see there's a target, quickly start pinpointing it. Learn to figure out with your coil where the target is in the ground and then get in there and dig. A lot of guys don't pinpoint well and so they dig a hole here and the target's still in the ground then they dig a hole next to it and they expand the hole and expand the hole and they spend 15 or 20 minutes getting the target out of the ground. Well most of that 15 or 20 minutes you could have been using to find more nuggets and uh, so the quicker you can get shallow targets out of the ground and move on, the better off you are. Some of them will be gold, but a bunch of them are going to be trash. So the, the sooner you move on and keep looking, the better. The best gold is often in crevices. And gold is really heavy. Gold is half again heavier than lead. And it tends to work its way down and into bedrock crevices. It literally will get wedged in there and then stuck. Now, there are exceptions to this rule. There is such a thing as false bedrock. You can get uh, um, heavy layers of clay that don't get disturbed, and uh, the gold will deposit on top of that. Um, there's also caliche that will solidify, and so uh, caliche is almost like a solid rock of its own, and gold will deposit on the hard caliche. So there's also some fine flaky flood gold on gravel bars, but... Uh, Metal detectors operators usually don't uh, end up with that fine flaky gold. So keep on sampling. Keep on looking. Always be exploring. Now I mentioned gold in bedrock crevices. This is a, a dirt clod, basically, that was found with a metal detector. Now you think, well, I didn't buy a metal detector to find dirt clods. But look at this dirt clod closely. You can see there's all kinds of little picker nuggets in it. Literally, this dirt clod was just full of gold. There was probably more than a quarter of an ounce of gold in this dirt clod of all little nuggets. And it would have been something easily missed, but the metal detector went over it and said, Woo, there's something there. And it was wedged into the, the bedrock and hidden, but the metal detector saw it. That's that's a was a good thing. Okay. Now, a bedrock sources for nuggets, this particular spot... Uh, was in Alaska, went up there with some friends, and uh, there were over 100 nuggets that found, found on this bedrock, and so we dug out all the gravel around it, and uh, we actually got, I think, close to three ounces of gold out of this area. So one of the things about metal detecting is you find a bunch of nuggets in a small area, there's probably a lot of finds in there too, and, and maybe a lot more finds by weight than the coarse stuff. Bench gravels can be very productive. Here you can see an area of river gravel with the rounded boulders and, and chunks sitting on bedrock. And, and basically what happens is rivers and streams, as they cut their way down through the mountain, they sometimes strand chunks of gravel, areas of gravel, high and dry up above the modern river. And these things can be anywhere from 
10 foot above the modern river to hundreds and hundreds, even a thousand feet above the modern river. And you know when it's in place like this that they've never been mined. This is an area that uh, has never been, you know, there's never been anybody uh, to take out that in place gravel. So it's a good place. These are good places to uh, explore with your metal detector. Now river bedrock can be a good source as well. Uh, but rivers can be trashy. You can find everything from fishing weights to bits of metal trash that's been washed down by floods. Uh, the one thing about, about river bedrock is that gold can replenish sometimes. If an area like this gets a big flood and a bunch of gold is washed down, well, the crevices that have already been cleaned out might get some new gold in them. Uh, so, uh, and also crevices that have iron trash. So you go along and you detect a, a, a crevice. You know, there maybe there's a, a nail in it or something. And you think, ah, it's just a piece of trash. But uh, those same crevices that collect heavy materials like nails will also be the same ones that collect heavy materials like gold flakes and small nuggets. So don't just walk away from a, a crevice if you find a little nail in it. Rivers and streams also have benches along them, and I, I mentioned the benches. Uh, old placer mines. There are hundreds of old placer mines in California, and some in Nevada and Oregon, too. And nearly all of these have some potential for gold. You can see the bank on this is most of 100 feet high, down to the bottom where I'm standing to take this picture. And nearly all of these have potential, although most of it's along the bedrock. There can be false bedrock layers in the banks of these things that uh, trap gold. These obvious spots, a lot of them have been worked, but some, still some good gold remains. A lot of these things take up hundreds of acres in California. The ground sluice areas. This is another place that's a good kind of place to look. Um, these were shallow hydraulic mines, often associated with vein zones and eroded uh, tertiary channels. They can be good sources of nuggets, and sometimes they're overlooked and less obvious. Uh, you can see this pile of rocks that the old timers threw up. You know, it, it's hidden in among the trees. And here the gravels are maybe five or ten feet deep originally. And the miners washed off the five or ten feet and then moved on. And they threw their, their bigger gravels, the stuff that's too big to go in the sluice box, they threw that into a pile. And sometimes I, I've actually peeled back some of these piles and, and, and gotten some good nuggets. So sometimes uh, accessing bedrock that you have to peel back some of the, the boulder piles, that can be pretty good. Even hard rock, old hard rock mines can be good. Um, old dumps on the outside of the mine can have gold that the miners overlooked. And I, I recommend uh, the dumps as a good good place to try. I don't recommend going inside. Now you'll say, hey, Chris, here you are inside a mine. And it's true, I'm inside a mine, but this is an active mine um, that they're maintaining and the miners are currently working in. And so I wasn't uh, crawling up into some old stope in an old mine that had been abandoned since the 1800s. This is a, a current operation. And I was going in there and showing them in a, a pocket that they'd found that there was still some gold left behind that the metal detector could see. So anyway, going inside old mines I advise against because of all the hidden dangers. Mines are, are overlooked sources of gold, but not all hard rock mines are good. A lot of hard rock mines, the gold inside them is literally like dust. And it's, it's not the size of gold that even a good VLF will detect. Now, I mentioned that nuggets form in groups. This is a picture of a nugget patch that I visited in Western Australia. In the foreground, you can see several areas where the, the rocks, the pebbles, have been scraped aside and, and uh, open space has been created. Every one of those little open spaces, a, a nugget came out of. And further away from the camera, you can't really see, but there's all kinds of those little open spaces out there, too. This nugget patch, the guy who first found it, he got over 30 ounces of gold. Some folks that came in later, they got over an ounce. I came out there even later, was poking around for crumbs, 
and I got most of a quarter outs out of this area. So, you know, it, it's a it's a good, you know, nuggets form in patches, and it's, it takes some work to clean them out. But of course, they don't grow back, and eventually there are fewer and fewer nuggets to find, and eventually you get to zero and have to move on and find a new place. So do you want to find more gold? Well, the answer is to get out and explore and sample different areas. A prospector always keeps on prospecting. You know the old image of the prospector as a guy wandering around with his burrow or mule, you know, crossing over through the desert or the mountains? And there's some truth to that. The guys wandered around and tried different places trying to find where there was you know, patches of nuggets or areas that there was lots of gold. And the guys who were successful and knew what they did, they did really well. Now, do you want to find more gold? Because it's still out there for those who are persistent and continue to search. It's not easy to hang in there, um, but the big finds are made by those guys who don't quit and give up. A lot of folks buy a metal detector and have visions of big nuggets and, you know, they see things that other people find and they uh, go out and hunt and, and they'll only find just some trash and, you know, nothing of any value. And they get discouraged and they put their detector away and, and stop working. A friend of mine says, uh, a metal detector in a closet gathers only dust. And there's a lot of truth to that. You know, if you're not out exploring with your metal detector, you're, you're, you're not going to find anything with it. You got to do research and, and find places where, where you can take your metal detector and, and get some gold. So doing research to find new locations. The successful prospector gets out and explores to find those spots with new gold. Now, finding new locations, finding those right locations, that's the really tough thing. Um, there's no single one right way. Um, old places that people have worked and, and beat to death, you know, the gold doesn't grow back, like I say, and a lot of times, you know, slim pickings are what you end up with, you know, the few, last few crumbs or, or maybe nothing. But these can be good spots to learn. You know, if you knew, know that gold was found here, you know, you can see what it looks like and you can hear what the ground sounds like, you know, whether it's strongly mineralized or, or what. You know, and if you find a few crumbs, hey, bully for you, you've done well. Um, they're good spots to learn. But new patches, new places, places where somebody hasn't cleaned it out before, they're much, much harder to find, but the rewards are so much greater. The guy who found the 75-ounce nugget, he didn't find it in a place that has been detected by 100 guys before he got there. He found it in a place that was different, that he, no one else had been to. And so he... Uh, he found something new and different because he ran his metal detector over a spot that hadn't been detected before. Location books, and there's a lot of location books, you know, the gold districts of California, the placer districts of Nevada or Arizona. You know, there's a lot of these books. They're great. Those are great places to start your research. You know, read through there. Find out about the different places, what kind of gold they found. You know, was it all hard rock or... Did they get big nuggets? You know what? 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 You know, was it? What was the history of those places? And those places can really, those books can really get you started. And then a lot of them have references. You can check other books and do more research. Look at maps. One of the greatest tools that's out there right now is Google Earth. You know, you can. The pictures now on Google Earth are so accurate that you can just look down and see amazing stuff you can see small workings on the ground roads that aren't on any map you know it's it's a big help to uh, visit a, a place you plan on going to visit it on Google Earth first and see what it looks like and then when you get out there on the ground you you'll be hitting the ground with a running start because you already have a head an, an idea kind of a heads up as to what's there and one last thing before I kind of get toward finishing up, I want to note that platinum can be found with metal detectors. Now, platinum nuggets are way much rarer than gold nuggets. There's lots of gold to be found. There's some platinum to be found. Um, they, but there are platinum nuggets out there. Um, they're found in certain places in Northern California, Alaska, and some other locations. Um, 
some places because of a plaster accumulation of heavy materials they're found in the same place together with gold nuggets and they often have the color of like fresh cut steel as you can see in these pictures so if you go out and you find something that looks like a nugget in every way as far as shape but the color is like a piece of steel eh, it might be platinum so it's something to think about now, I want to, just as we're summing up here, I want to note, I have a book called Fistful of Gold. For those of you who uh, want to know all the subjects, uh, you know, all the details of what you need to know to be a successful metal detector prospector, well, this is the book. I mean, we have all the stuff that goes along with, because it isn't just about learning your detector. Finding places is about learning to prospect. It's about uh, learning a little bit about geology. All these subjects I go over and spend a lot of time. Literally, this, this book is a full size, and it's over 350 pages long. It covers a lot of material, minerals, geology. It's an encyclopedia of everything you need to know about digging your own gold, whether it's panning location, location, or panning uh, gold, lo location research, sluicing, nugget detecting, dry wash, gold geology. It's all there in the book, and... Uh, you'll find that the book is highly educational. It basically has all the information I wish I knew when, when I was uh, going, getting started and had to learn the hard way. So the book's available on Amazon. And just go and uh, click or go to Amazon and look for Fistful of Gold by Chris Ralph, and I guarantee you'll find it. And the, uh, finally, also, I have uh, an information website on gold and gemstones. Uh, be sure to uh, check out my webpage at uh, nevadaoutbackgems.com, prospect, chrisprospect.htm. There's a lot of information there, um, some really good stuff that will help you find more gold as well. So that's it for this presentation. I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, be sure and hit the, the subscribe button because I'm going to be coming out with more videos. Uh, hit the bell for notifications as well and uh, give it a like and if you have any questions or comments uh, feel free to put those in the comment section below and until next time we'll see you soon good luck in your prospecting <laughs>